Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, uh, Pastor Emeritus Gert. Amen. For the uh, warm and kind introduction. I'm excited that uh, you are still here to introduce me. Amen. Amen. I'm more excited to be here to be introduced. I want to uh, thank all of the persons involved for the invitation to come and share uh, with you on this special day. Amen. Amen. I was just uh, flooded with a multitude of memories when I first was contacted by someone from Christ. I said, man, I can't believe that uh, that church is still going great and has anybody there who remembers me. <laughs> and uh, so I was excited by the invitation. It took us, seems like over a year to finally get together. But I thank you for being persistent and extending the invitation. And I'm just glad to see my great friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Melvin Curtin here as well, and then to see uh, one who was a part of his uh, genetic family carrying on oh, yeah. uh, this awesome ministry, Brother John. It's awesome to meet for him and his wonderful wife today and to know that you are celebrating along with a centenarian uh, celebration yeah, yeah. of this fourth year of a pastoral leadership. Yeah. And I think it is great. Uh, it's a perfect match. Uh, energy and experience. Energy and experience. You know, often in a multitude of cultures, uh, more specifically, uh, not ours, uh, we tend to put gaps and create uh, great gulfs between generations. Yeah. Yeah. We tend uh, to not even have people from other generations to live in our homes. Sometimes we do our best to make sure they have no influence on our children. Because we believe that their traditions and their customs and their habits could take them or keep them from being who they could be. Uh, but a lot of cultures figured out that one of the keys to continuity and leaving a tremendous legacy is having all generations under one roof. That's right. That's right. All right. In, in Japan, uh, youth centers and senior citizens are housed in the same building. Uh, the centers for each. We would never do such a thing in the U.S. Uh, we would think that there would be great conflict. But I believe that a church of hundred with tremendous experience, with great uh, interaction, an awesome legacy, a great reputation, uh, deserves the energy of a youthful pastor like this pastor. Because when you got experience, you usually don't have no energy left. <laughs> when you got a whole lot of energy, usually you don't have much experience. So that's why this is a, a great uh, interaction. I'm excited to see uh, Pastor John and this church uh, moving forward because he's got the energy and you've got the experience and together uh, the future is absolutely unlimited. And, uh, and I wanted to just throw that in. Let me also say now, I'm usually a uh, a little, a little, just a little, just a little uh, long-winded, some people tend to say. Me too. And if so, I just want to give you a heads up. If you like short sermons, don't stay quiet. The quieter you are, the longer I take. You got an amen right here. So if you got, you know, if you got somewhere to go, something to do, or you're a little hungry, you may want to borrow an amen or get up. Say it, preach it, tell it, come on up, sit down, be quiet. Some, all of those things will make a tremendous difference. Amen. And yeah. So that will speed up the message. If you, if you wake up and I'm still at it, it's probably your fault. Come on, preach it. It's your fault. Somebody go to sleep on your own, you were too quiet, you let them go. If you can make some noise, they couldn't have gone to sleep. <laughs> Amen going right there. Come on, get some, get some practice. Come on, please. I'm 
bless you. Uh, if you have a Bible, if you have a Bible, if you have a Bible today, you have a Bible, uh, let me uh, invite your attention uh, for a few minutes. We will share together today to chapter, chapter 16 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Chapter 16 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Uh, this is uh, what it says. I'd like to have you look uh, specifically at this particular verse. Verse 17 and some of the verses that follow. In the New International Version, 1617 begins by saying, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or hell will not overcome it. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I'd like to talk about uh, something you may be interested in today. Let's just call it the future of the church. Uh, the future of the church. The future of the church. While I, I know the stories of several people I gaze upon in the congregation, my own story, my own connection, my affinity, my affection, my love, my appreciation, my respect, but more than that, my devotion, dedication, and commitment to the work called ministry and church All right. causes me to have uh, an unrelenting interest in what lies ahead for us in the future. Right. Hopefully when I look around the room and I see that many of you who sit here today have what could be termed a lot of sweat equity. All right. uh -huh. You got a lot of perspiration, a lot of inspiration, involvement, uh, dedication, invested uh, in the entity in your community called the church. And usually when you are heavily invested, you have a greater interest than those who are looking to just be compensated. All right. When you are heavily invested, while you have heaven in your view, you have an interest in knowing whether or when you have a diminished, when you have passed from the scene, you tend to have some concerns about, I wonder what will this look like 10, 15, 20, or 30 years from now. That's if you have any level of what I love to call intellectual curiosity. All right. All if right. you have an interest in knowing what is to be, what is not, how will it reveal itself? What will happen? Or when the curtain of time has been pulled back, will our investment, will our devotion, will our commitment, will our dedication uh, to the church pay off? All right. Uh -huh. Or will the present we now experience be a true predictor of what lies ahead in the days to come? All right. Okay. Come Can on, we use right now? to determine what the church will be like 
10 years from now. All right. Or, or 20 years from now. Yeah. When, I, when I know that you celebrate 100 years of life and energy, effort and input uh, as a church, it's easy to decide that my history can be lived on for the rest of my life. All right. But I'm here to tell you that uh, your history is only a preview of your possibility. All right. All right. And, and so your history should not become your crutch. All right. Uh, it should not be your alibi nor your excuse. For what you have done is only a, a small indicator of what you could have done. Right. Because the more enlightened, the more informed, the more invested, the more inspired, the more mature you become, then the more you know to do. All right. All right. And so we are not allowed to make this determination. Oh, come on. Which is why I thought maybe just looking at a couple of you who don't mind the gray hair showing, come on. others of you who uh, wish some would just show up someplace. Yeah. I fully understand that there's got to be a couple of people who have an abiding curiosity like me. Who who gone when the storms were raging, who showed up when no one else has been of the boast of the community. If you're the first one always here, the last one to leave, right. or you're the most faithful, you're the most dedicated. Never been a funeral that you missed. Haven't missed the revival, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Right. Yeah. Come on, Doc. However, our past, it is not our future. All right. And when I heard what Jesus said in response uh, to the uh, awareness and the high level of spiritual uh, intuitiveness that uh, Peter demonstrated when he lifted his hand and said, I got the answer. I know who you are. Let me just tell you, I'm going to add it in about 10 yeah. minutes. All right. Come on, come on, Doc. And especially the folk up front. You see, I don't have no glasses on. <laughs> so I can see past these first two rows because yeah. so they're responsible for everything. Right. And I have a thought, fans, you, you, you don't know what the front row seat if you're a fan. You don't go down front to a Beyonce and don't want to be a front row and don't like it. Yeah. Oh, come on. So you front, I'm not looking for a Jesus jury. I'm looking for some Jesus fans to be on the first few rows. Come on, man. I don't want a front row seat and go sleep on the act. I could be in the nosebleed seats if I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Come on. Hey man, go right there. Amen. Yeah. I don't know, it may be another generation before I get back, so I need to say some of this. <laughs> it's critical yeah. that the church fully understands that we are not engaged yes, in a losing call. Yeah. Come on, God. And so I thought just maybe somebody had an interest. Yeah. And what's ahead for us All right. in well, the future? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Could you give me just a moment yeah, yeah. Uh, to just uh, maybe use a personal moment to explain my own interest uh-huh. and, and how excited uh, you may become to get uh, a view of what lies ahead for us. Yeah, yeah. Right. When I was uh, much younger, I, I was a tremendous uh, comic book fan. All right. Yeah. And so I, I was a fan of all of the uh, the people who get movies now. Yeah. All, right. all the Marvel superheroes. Uh, uh, all of the super people. It could have been a super ant, super dog. If it was super, I, I was into that comic book. Yeah. And I lived right next door to a, a drugstore. All right. Uh, the pharmacist. Uh, Dr. Johnson was a guy I knew and so I'd always know when he's going to get the new shipments of comic books in and I was always there to get all the fresh copies straight out the box to see what was going to happen in this issue and there were some times when I would read 
uh, one of those uh, copies of the new edition of one of my favorite heroes, and the plot was so diabolical. All right. I get too nervous to read it all the way through. I have to go over. I, I know none of y'all would do this. I go to the last page and see how my hero came out. And then I go back and read it through because then I knew he was going to be okay. So I was comfortable reading uh, that edition. And when you see how Satan has a soul of diabolically affected and infected our community and we see a tremendous drop off in the demographics of church attendance. Yeah. We see that our promotion, our marketing, many major congregations are just places now where they uh, hold memorial services for what they used to do. Right, right, right. Come on, right. right. And, and so it, it, it's, it's tough yeah. to, to determine what the future holds for the church. Come on, Doc. Sunday school teachers mm. cry for students to teach. Yeah. Public school teachers complain overcrowded classroom. Yeah. Uh, got too many, I can't teach. Yeah. 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 So it says there's not a shortage of people. There's a shortage of energy in church. Yeah. Yeah. Where people have decided that it's not their job to be fishers of men, they're just here to watch the aquarium. Oh. That means all they do is tend to the fish who are already caught. Oh. You may want to write that down. Oh, I wrote it. I'm going to tweet it later. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Come on. Now. And we're not yeah. trying to catch any fish. Yeah. We're trying to clean fish. Yeah. Talk about who's right, who's dirty, who ain't right, who ain't quite right. It's not your job to clean the fish, it's your job to just catch it. Just catch it. Yeah. God's got you when you catch it. Yeah. You come on, man. Yeah. Come on now. It's amazing how when you understand how we've been impacted by the march of time, the enlightenment of people, yeah. uh, the availability of an informational glut on any subject. All right, come on. All you got to do is just Google it. That's it. Yeah. yeah, come on, Rob. Right? And, and so, in such an age, you got to wonder. Many of us have resigned ourselves to just, just the way it is. This is our new reality. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the truth is, that ain't the truth. Yeah, all right. The truth is, when you have decided that God knows what he's doing, mm. God understands fully how to impact our culture, our families, our communities, our society, and on a broader level, our global community. All right. God, All right. God's been in charge for a little while. Yeah. Uh, his resume is rich and long. Filled with uh, all kinds of incidents, episodes, uh, God has a multitude of capacities to correct anything that's out of order. Yeah. Yeah. But I come oh, to suggest to you that you and I have to fully appreciate that God has given us an assurance yeah. not to just hang out and be happy with mediocrity. Yeah. No, he's given us this assurance to make certain that we don't give in, we don't collapse, uh, we don't come cave on, in, on, we right. don't turn loose, we don't surrender, we don't let go, we don't retreat, we don't bow down in defeat yeah. to the fact that someone else All right. yeah. has a message greater than our own. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad to tell you that in spite of how things look, Come on, Doc. And, and when I look at the word and then look up from the word at the world, I must admit, yeah. yes. things don't look good. All right. All right. Uh -huh. I mean, I, yeah, I heard what Jesus said. Yeah. What on, he Doc. said was, upon this rock, uh -huh. I will build my church. Yeah. All right. Come on. And he said, at the very gates of hell. Hey, yeah. We will not prevail. 
will not overwhelm it, will not impede it, or will not deter it, mm, yeah. will not overcome it, yeah. right. will not victimize it. Uh -huh. right, yeah. And, and I, I read that with, with great assurance, and I, I'm inspired when I read it. Yeah. But when I look up at the world, it makes you want to retire. All right, yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. Because the picture of the world right now is quite different. Yeah. From yeah, the yeah. one in the word. Yeah. Come on, Doc. Yeah. Huh. Well, well, let me just talk about Chicago because y'all don't seem to be able to identify what I like. I guess that, that's why you have maybe. Oh, no. Oh, even no. Apples is not different from where I come from. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So maybe I should even change the sermon because your future's good. <laughs>
of the church. Nobody wants to join misery. And most of us look miserable unless we're doing something. And once we prove, we will assume our miserable posture. Come on, man. Same people who get up and go, come on, everybody, praise the Lord. Soon they sit down. You know what I'm going to have to do to pray? Raise your praise from where you are. Come on. The future of the church is in jeopardy. How did it happen? What happened? Yeah. On whose watch did it occur? All right. Come on. If that's the lost generation, who was in charge when they got lost? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on, come on, talk about yeah. yeah. Scoot your chair up and stay away. Right. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. When I hear the word and I look at the world yeah. and I yeah. see the despair of disciples. Yeah. See people ready to give up. Just hanging on till Jesus come. No, but you've got to be active. If, you, if you're still here, he left you here for a reason. Right, right, right. See, when I look at Pastor uh, Gurdon uh, Emeritus, I see someone who is living by a principle. Yeah. As long as you project something in front of you All right, to yeah. achieve for God, he'll leave you here to achieve it. Yeah. Uh, did you miss that? As long as you not say, well, I hit the magic number, I quit. Yeah. Ain't no magic number. Yes. If I don't look in the mirror, I forget my age. Right. 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 Ain't no magic number. No, there's a magic belief system. Yeah. As long as you believe that God got you here for a reason, and you don't quit that reason, you keep saying, God, I got something else I want to do. I got a, another vision. I, 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 another seed is growing up. He'll keep leaving you here to tend to what you planted. Yeah. 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 But if you're sitting around and but I get the Lord and get to with me. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm going to have it all over. I guess it's not my day to over. Come on. I said, well, okay, now, because my retirement plan is out of this world. <laughs> So, no need to leave you here if you don't plan to do anything. You can spend your vacation time with me. Right. If you decided to become a part of the Do Nothing Club, come on home. Right. Come on, And as, as committed, as convicted, as heavenly as we look, if at the end of this service I can make an announcement. God has a few buses to the closest terminal. Mm. You can go to heaven today. Mm. Most of y'all will go out the back door. Right, right. <laughs> right, right. I'll be the first one there. A blues philosopher once wrote these words. Everybody want to go to heaven. But nobody wants to die. Y'all don't need it. But nobody wants to die. See, we want the best of what God has. We want to produce, but not to practice. Yeah, yeah. We want what God has, but not to process. Yeah. Yeah. And he said to these men who were his apprentices, his followers, they wanted to know, here we are in the shadows of all of these churches and temples that once were. Yeah. Yeah. Here he stood with his own guys in Caesarea Philippi, a place of polygamous, multi-god worship. But now the temples were in disrepair. Right, right. Cobwebs covering the pews and the altars. The doors locked. Have you ever wondered what would your church look like twenty years from now? When we have more funerals than baptisms. Right, right, all right. I just need somebody to just yeah. talk some truth. Yeah. When you're having more funerals than baptisms, yeah. Yeah. what can the future of the church be? Yeah. When you're more concerned 
about what you roll over at the end of the year than what you use it for. Yeah. Come on, God. We brag about how much we got in the bank and hope the folk in the congregation. Come on, yeah. Come on, Come on. Yeah. Come on. 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 Jesus said to his disciples, listen, let's have a conversation quickly. I need to know who do men say that I am? Because who you say he is determines how you respond to what he says. Right. Do you now. get that? Yeah. Who you say he is determines how you respond to what he says. All right. All right. You may say He's the great God, but if you are not implementing, yeah. if all you do is fill your Bible with notations with no application, yeah. Yeah. Come on. what's the point? If all you do is highlight the scripture without highlighting it in your lifestyle, yeah. what's the real reason for cold yellow, cold blue for prophecy, cold this for yeah. wow, wisdom, and cold this for history? It don't even matter. Right. Copious notation without application leads to no transformation. Your book's so full of notes you can't hardly read your Bible. <laughs> but none of it has leaked into your life. Oh, yeah. My Lord. Wow. Yeah. The church is in danger, not because God cannot keep his word, but because the church will not obey his word. Yeah. We live by our own personal gospel. Most of us have a fifth gospel in all of our lives. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, your name. Come on, now. I got a fifth gospel. In the fifth gospel, you read, it ain't what you do. It's how you do it. That's in the fifth gospel. We have not heard him when he responds to who he is. Who he is will determine what you expect from God in the future. You will know that God is not through with you yet. If he's not through with you, he can't be through with church. Right. All right. Now he's coming back for the church. Yes. And I thank God that when I got this response that I read to you in 17 and 18, it was not Peter who said this. Yes. If Peter had said it, I wouldn't have trusted it. Right. And I like it. He's human. Mm. He's like a lot of us. Come on. Yeah, but I wouldn't put my faith in what Peter said. What if Thomas had said, upon this rock, I wouldn't believe in him either. Right, right. Because he proved that he had doubt yeah, right. as, a, as a default position in his lifestyle. Yeah. When I, when I heard what he said, upon this rock, I fully understood that there would be seasons of disruption to the impact of ministry. But we must hang on in there and hold on knowing that beyond our moment, God is counting on us to pass the baton with the faith that says, and this too shall pass. Come on, God. You better preach. What about the future of the church? Come on. It requires that we want analyze who we are. Right, right. The church people are always busy looking through the window. Rally in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I just need some people to say, man, I know you got to talk about this stuff over tea last night, but let's talk about it some more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We spend a lot of time gazing at other people. The only time we look in the mirror is the cover who we don't want them to see. Uh-huh. Come on. We 
spend a lot of time condemning mm. other people outside of the church. But we never look in the mirror. All right. It's the man in the mirror who needs ministry. It's the person in the mirror that God is holding responsible. God is not holding unsaved people for how unsaved they're acting. See, our problem is we want to get the world to act like the church when God intended for our own responsibility is to keep the church from acting like the world. And we are changing the complexion of the congregation because we've decided the only way to win is by joining them. And the only way to be effective, impactful, and magnetic is through the mystery of Jesus Christ. Let me get through before I doze. The word of God says, Jesus heard them and said, I want to know whom do men say that I am? Come on, God. And he said, Well, 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 some say that you are Elijah. Some say you are Moses. Some say you are one of the prophets. Some say they're not sure. He says, okay, that's okay. I I can deal with the confusion of the people if my disciples are clear. What? Oh, see, you missed that. What? I can handle the people's confusion if my disciples are clear. Because if you are clear, you can give them clarity. But a lot of us are not clear. We're still shopping for ideology. We're still trying to find a doctrine that fits how I think. We're still looking for a church that condones who I want to be. We are still trying to shape the church in the image of ourselves. He said, some say you are a multitude of people. He said, well, let's bring the circle a little closer. Because I'm about to lay some heavy stuff on you. I, I want to give you some words that will be meaningful to future generations. I don't want you to miss out. Come on, God. That's right. That's right. So I, ne- I need to ask you this next question. Who do you say that I am? Because if I am to you who I say I am, then you're going to see a revolution. If I am who you say I am, then you will know that my power exceeds all. Then I've got a word for you if you're going to be my church. I want to give you an assurance policy. Come on. See, insurance begins at the grave and ends at the end of life. Assurance is transferable. Assurance operates in the realm of reality and in the realm of eternity. Thank God for assurance. His assurance was upon this rock. I will build my church. I I, I don't know about other churches in other names, by other founders, but my church. Come on, come on. I want you to go home knowing that you've got another hundred years ahead of you. That the future is bright for Christ's missionary. That beyond where you are now, God already has a name for every person who will fill every seat. I need somebody to talk to me just a moment. God doesn't have to go searching. Within four or five blocks, there are people enough to stand in the aisle on Sunday morning. But you got to do some self-examination. You got to begin looking the book on Sunday morning and see how many of the activities in the bulletin are for folk beside the ones who already come. I just need somebody to talk to me a minute. Just read the bulletin. The bulletin of every church tells you what what their focus is. 
Come on now. If you got more, more pages filled with sick lists and shut in. And all the meetings of the auxiliaries. Step on toes, bro. Step on toes. For the rest of the week. Then your focus is just tending the sheep who didn't run away. But when there's outreach for the women, an outreach for the men, an outreach for the seniors, an outreach for the youth, a fellowship for those, and you're always opening new doors for people to find their way into church. I know we said the door of the church is open, but we need a whole lot of doors. And only the church can open the doors that people will find themselves in need of what you have to offer. Yeah. But it got to be some people who don't have a problem with being supplanted. Yeah. Folk who don't mind being replaced. Because yeah. the truth is, you have not been successful until you identify your replacement. Yeah. Write that down. Right. You have not succeeded unless you've identified that you're not going to leave what you started on your own. Yeah. All right. The word of God says your tone, your tone, right? how, how, what he says is how, 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 are you going to allow yourselves to be dissuaded yeah, come on. by what you see in the distance? Uh-huh. I know you see these dilapidated buildings. We see them. He said, uh-huh. I know you see. All of the ruins I hear music. Yeah. of religious efforts. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. He said, I know the influence Watch it. you've had on your own mind and on your own faith. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so today, what I heard him say was, upon this rock, I will build my church. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Right. And then he said, the gates of hell yeah. shall not yeah. prevail against what I'm doing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then he said to them, my Lord, yeah. what I really want to say to you my brothers and my sisters. Yeah, yeah. What I want you to do is hold on a little while long. Yeah. Uh-huh. What I need of you doing today is waiting on Jesus. Because he's already said my way will always win. Uh, and then he said, I want you to know the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the only reason the gates will not be able to prevail against the church is I'm going to give you some keys. Yeah. Did you hear me? Games. But every game that you come in contact with, uh, what I have is a key for that gate. Uh huh. Some people decide the gates are going to come down the church aisles. But the church has to be on the move to meet a gate. Did you hear me? If you are not leaving the building, God will never have a chance to open any gates for you. Uh Oh yeah. The Bible said, he said to them, oh, build a rock. I will build, build my church. The gates of hell shall not overcome. Christ's mission is 
God's got you. Yeah, yeah. The church is saying. Yeah. Tell the neighbor, we're saying. Yeah. We're going to make it. Yeah. The church is going to be all right. Yeah. Your future, your future 
If you follow this church, that will be the best news you've heard in a little while. Your future is safe. God's got more than a hundred years ahead of you. And not just the ones behind you. I know what's in the, the rearview mirror, but you better look through the windshield. Yeah.